Greetings gentlemen, this is going to be a guide about how you can find your preferred role, giving you some examples of what each role needs to do and what each role contains as a hero pool. Let's get started. Real quick before I get going into this, I think picking a role and counter picking and the last picking and all of that sort is kind of overrated. Just find a hero you're in love with and spam him continuously. I think this is the best way you gain MMR. So you choose one role, one or two, maybe three heroes, and you keep spamming them. If they're the correct heroes, I don't know. If they're the perfect heroes in this patch, it doesn't really matter. I think if you just get good at one hero and you're a Grandmaster Darkseer or something, you're just gonna stomp your games. With that being said, let's get started. The first thing, position one. I'm going to layer them according to their positions. We count them from position 1 to position 5 and they're basically based on their net worth. So position 1 has the most net worth and the most gold available or the highest priority of farm and position 5 has the lowest priority of farm. Position 1 carry. Your job is farming. You're supposed to be the guy with most of the net worth in the game. You're supposed to be that dude because the gold enables you to buy items that actually make an impact of the game. Imagine you're an oracle, you can have as much gold as you want, even if you have two rapiers or three rapiers and five dagons or whatever, it's not gonna change the outcome of the game, most likely. But if you are a Sven, for example, and you are six slotted while the enemy is not, you can just solo win the game. That's why you're the carry, and that's why your farming is the most important thing. Secondly, it comes together hand in hand, is the item timing. You want to be looking for your item timing. The way you improve as a carry player is by pushing your item timing closer and closer to your ideal. You always want to set exactly the timing that you have. You want to have a goal of how many lasts you want, 25 lasts, 5 moons and so on. So you just keep pushing your gold timing and your gold per minute basically defines your success as a carry. Choosing team fights. It's super important as a carry to choose the right team fights. If you choose two or three wrong team fights, that means joining bad fights or not joining good fights, then your probability of losing the game is super super high. Being determined and knowing what to look for in team fights is very important. Positioning comes next, even if you have the perfect team fight, if your positioning is garbage, you are just dead and your damage output potential is just gone if you blink into a Kono or a black hole. Itemization is last. As a carry, you usually don't have too much variety. But if you don't get that BKB in a BKB game, then you're in big troubles. So you really need to look if you need a basher, if you need a BKB, whatever item it is that you have to go for. There are usually two or three paths for a carry. Know them inside and out and know when to customize them and when to go for what. Classic carry heroes are anti-mage, and PL and Phantom Assassin, all the heroes you can see here have some similarities. They're really, really weak at the beginning, some more, some less. Of course, an anti-mage is weaker at minute five than a Ursa might be, but still all those heroes need some sort of farming items and they become scary and become potentially deadly at minutes, let's say 20 to 35, this is usually where they start to get some speed into the game and when they kick off. And until then, you really want to farm your stuff. So those are some typical carries. As you can see, some of them are really squishy. A true ranger, for example, dies very easily if you're in the wrong position, while a illusion hero like Terror Bladed needs to be dealt with very differently. But all of those heroes have in common that they need a ton of gold and then they can solo carry the game later on. Those carries and all of the classic heroes I'm going to notice have been traditionally played in those role and also I'm pretty sure in the next patches even if you start doing them now it doesn't matter if the patches change because those carries they have maintained themselves as reliable carries over time. The position 2 and the mid lane. Important for mid laner especially is the lane control. Nowhere else in Dota you will find such a impressive matchup with one against one where your laning skill and your ability to draw aggro, to trade, to control the last hits, to get the denies on time is that important than on the mid lane. Every single creep that you can get it can give you a small advantage that kicks you to the level 3, to the level 5 or level 6 power spike 
enables you to get a solar kill snowball from the XP, get a power rune and rotate. So many things are happening and those little changes need to be on your list and lane control is really the first basic that you need to master like no other role in Dota. The second thing that comes with the mid lane are the rune timings. Your timings are really bound to the runes and it's two, four, six, eight. All of those runes are incredibly important and you cannot miss them. And most other roles in Dota don't have to think about them as hard as you do. The rotations are what sets you off. Once you're minute eight to minute nine, you want to rotate. So you need to have the ability to look at other maps and other lanes and see what's happening there. If you cannot judge correctly when to rotate, or if you feel pressured by your teammates to rotate into bad rotations, then mid lane is probably not for you. You need to be very determined about what you want to do and analyze situations correctly where you want to jump in and then not get distracted by teammates crying for help and trying to fix everything that's happening. Your early dominance is what sets a good mid lane player apart from a bad one. Bad mid lane players tend to either do random things that don't gain them an advantage or just AFK farm as if they would be a carry. Good mid lane players on the other hand have the ability to recognize enemy weaknesses, punches them and then snowball and get some momentum out of this and some movement out of the whole engagement. Finally, your mechanical skill has to be superior. Many mid lane heroes are very complex. Some of the most complex heroes like Invoker, Tinker, Meepo are found in the mid lane. And if you want to master them, you have to go through these. Even if you go with the basic things you want for the mid lane heroes, and this is my transition to the classic heroes, for the spirits, if you want to play the spirits, which I can highly recommend as a mid lane hero, at least to master one of the spirits, Ember, Storm or Void Spirit, then those require already a tremendous amount of mechanical skill compared to many support heroes, for example. So you need to be having quite the mobile fingers. Some other examples could be TA, for example. TA is a high net worth hero that likes to play in the mid lane oftentimes. And TA benefits from getting a lot of last hits and pushing the timings. So not all mid lane heroes are bound to being rotated all the time and having low last hits and high hero damage. Huck, Alina, classic heroes you see in the mid lane. And then on the bottom row, those are some cheesy picks. In Volker, you can just spam every single game. Tinker and Broodmother, of course, are heroes that nobody really likes, but if you learn them and you put your time in them, they're guaranteed to gift you some free MMR in many scenarios. Those heroes have in common that they usually dictate the tempo, they need a ton of experience, and they can move the game in many directions, and you can basically solo carry if you play mid lane really, really well. Off lane. Your job as an offlaner is to provide, to provide survivability. Survivability in many cases. You are the guy where all the focus in teamfights should be around. The more you can tank in teamfights, the better it is. You want to be a disruption towards the enemies. You don't want them to being able to do whatever they want. You need to stop them from having fun in the game. Your job is to completely shut down the carry in the laning stage already, then to take his tower and then to invade him in the jungle and then just look for opportunities to pressure like crazy. Your item timing is way earlier than a carry, even though you're sometimes a little bit later active than a mid laner, but still you are the guy, especially in the mid game, that moves the whole game and your team should be centering around you. You should communicate with your supporters that you should be playing together. Everybody that enables you needs to pack a smoke and immediately run at the enemy. Your job is just to be annoying as hell. Initiations are part of that. Getting the right initiations, being the first one, not scared of jumping in, actually having a axe call and catching everybody off guard, that's your job. Important to notice are the priorities here. If you make, let's say, troubles on the wrong lane and you bring um, attention to the carry lane, for example, and to his position, then you can bring people in danger. And you don't want to be fighting for nothing, always center it around objectives and don't fight in random areas. Avoid the dead lane. Itemizations become important as an offlane player. Usually later in the game, I feel like you have the choice to buy a couple of expensive items and they can really make a difference. Many supports don't have the luxury of having the choice of many items in the endgame, 
But you as a carry have a ton of gold in the end to spend and you want to spend it wisely. So look at the couple hero strategies that you can go for. If you're Doom, for example, you have a couple scenarios that you can play and a couple items that you can use. And then just choose wisely, get some experience with each build and then try to figure out which build suits the game the best. Classic offlane heroes are Bristleback, Centaur, Aegis. As you can see, all of them are very, very tanky, have the ability to just run in, initiate even some lockdown. Brewmaster is a little bit more on the complex side, but definitely worth learning. Then we have Doom, another lockdown of another hero. Tanky again, buys aura items to sustain the team. Night Stalker, same thing, you just rush in. Legion Commander, solo lockdown, initiation. Then you have a couple unit heroes. You can have, for example, um, the Beastmaster, which enables you to take towers really quick and shut down the lane. And you have AoE control with heroes like Tidehunter. But all of those heroes fall into the same category. You get your stuff, you initiate the team fight, you're a menace in the team fights, and you are hard to take down. Soft support. Your job as soft support, in my opinion, is to be ganking a lot. You can start to roam usually minute 3, 4, 5, wherever it suits you. As soon as you see that you're off laner, since you want the lane already, I'm assuming, is able to stand alone, you can rotate and look to other points of the map. One thing that comes up in the early game is the rune control. You want to be there at the rune. Minute 6 rune, minute 8 rune, I want my support to be there as a mid laner, because then we have a higher chance of securing it, we might even be able to get a kill. Your ability to move around the map is very important to us in the game. You want to be the help wherever it's needed. Along this way, you can ward and de-ward, just have an eye on what the enemy supports are doing, check the inventory and see what's going on on the map. Later on in the game, you are a wingman. You are standing with your carrier, with your offlaner, with your mid laner. Whoever wants to be in the action or needs help or is potentially getting ganked on, you want to be a part of that. I need your assists to be the highest of the game. You're always in action. You're active really early on. Your items are usually pretty straightforward and you make something happen. Your movement and your positioning, your ability to team fight with heroes really determines the way of the game. Global awareness is the main thing of this hero. If mid lane gets dived under the tower, then you're right there to help. If the enemy off lane is diving and you can save your carry, even if it's just minute two, UTP and you there. Save your TPs, walk outside of the base, look for the timings and look what your heroes want. If your carry just gets a BKB, you hit him up, you go with him, you do something. If your off laner just gets a blink, you walk with him. Classical heroes could be Tusk, since he has the ability to initiate, to block enemy heroes, rotate. You can build something more teamfight oriented and laning strong like Undying. Then you have Sky and Nyx Assassin, many, many, many heroes, even Dark Willow. Those are all heroes that benefit from net worth a little bit more than the position 5 heroes, but yet they're still very agile. They are not dependent on the items that they get and they can be everywhere at once. Usually those heroes have high movement speed, they like to walk around, they have low cooldown spells and they like to be active. Finally we get to the position 5. You are the team captain. In Dota, all the game is really a battle about CPU brain power. The more brain power you can put out in Dota, the higher your win probability is. And as a support, there's a lot of downtime. If you are running to a stack, you have downtime. If you are devoting something, you have downtime. And those times should be used to think about what's going on in the game. Why isn't the enemy Ember showing? Where is the team? Did they smoke? Where do they have wards? All those questions need to be answered by the team captain usually, because based on that, you are going to make the decisions. And I think the, uh, the hard support is best suited for that. For the laning stage, you're just the babysitter for your carry. Usually, as we said, the carries are really weak in the early levels and supports are usually stronger in the early levels. So this balances it out perfectly and you can win links. You do this by stacking and by pulling, by deboarding the camps, by looking forward, getting some region for your carry and just thinking about the future and how the laning stage could go. Your 
job is to protect the carry and you do it in many different ways you rebalance the wave you keep a equilibrium and you help out whenever you need it later on you're the guy that runs around with the smokes once you carry is on his path to 3000 last hits because he's jungling and got the battle fury and is now afk for the next 60 minutes you want to be playing with other heroes you want to be playing for areas main thing is you're not alone and feeding on some random lanes you don't want to be the first one to go in unless you have a stun initiation like line and usually you want to be very careful in the team fights even though you want to be part of it you still have to be careful. Supports are usually the lowest HP heroes, this means you die really quickly, but your strong spells can be really really strong, so you want to use them a ton. So getting the right balance of participating and staying in the back looking for opportunities is especially important as a support player. Some common examples for this are Crystal Maiden and Dazzle and Chakiro if you want to push buildings and push out creep waves still. We have Disruptor, Silencer, Oracles, very classy. All those heroes have something in common. They have strong levels at level 1 and level 3, but they also are heroes that enable teammates. With Crystal Maiden you have the mana, with Dazzle you save people from dying, with Disruptor you silence and lock down people, and with Silence, well, you silence people. Oracle keeps people alive and Io just heals in general. With Warlock you have heal and with Lich you have a shield. All of those abilities and the items you are going to buy with them are centered around enabling your heroes and you want to enable your course as good as possible in order to win the fights. So if you play those heroes, you want to have a mindset of how do I win the laning stage by keeping the creep equilibrium, how can I buy items to enable my course and where can I direct them on the map as a team captain. All right, I hope this uh, little excourse helped you out. In the end, for the summary, I want to re-summarize them real quick, right here. So, number one, carry, do you farm, you look for your own good, you win the late game. Mid lane, you need to be really good at accuring and last setting, and you need to rotate and dominate the early game. Off lane, you're the tank initiating dude that never dies and is just annoying all game. Position 4, you're just everywhere at the same time. Whenever people want to do something, you interrupt them from doing them and you save everybody that's around. Position 5, you're the team captain, you tell people where to go and when to go and you enable your course with the items that you buy. Cool, I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next one.